you very much for the opportunity to participate remotely in this PKP conference. Unfortunately, I couldn't be with you today. But I strongly believe we must find this kind of discussions where we can learn about different strategies and approaches of open access. The open access movement is a reality, but it is being shaped in different colors and different flavors. So this is the moment. This is the great opportunity to build a better future for science communication. And today I'm going to talk about a non-commercial, cooperative and sustainable open access approach that we are performing in Latin America. So let's begin by saying that uh, we implement two different models in these two different regions. One key feature it is, work, it is worth looking at from Latin America is that most of the publishing is scholarly led, scholarly owned and scholarly financed something that we didn't see at all in a North American or European context. Each institution is part of an informal cooperative that has not ever been made explicit, but every institution just finances journals with its own faculty members, and then that content is made available through open access to other institutions, which means that everybody gets benefit from everybody else's investment. This kind of informal cooperative has really worked even before open access got its official name. Uh, however, research evaluation systems assign different values depending on where a researcher decides to publish, north or south, and which papers selects to cite. So it is highly rated to publish in or cite journals of the global north, and on the contrary, it is low rated to publish in or site journals of the Global South. So even though we implement two different open access environments with different valuation scales, the decisions made in the North totally impact the way we design in the South. Uh, this is, for example, recent news from The Guardian, where it says it's time for academics to take back control of research journals. And this is the European context. Well, in Latin America, it's time that academia doesn't allow to lose control of its key product, knowledge. So I would say it's uh, time for the opportunity to make science an actual global conversation, which privileges the development of humanity. Now let's look at some key features of the open access in Latin America, where I believe it needs to be known in order to develop an inclusive open publishing ecosystem. Well, Latin America is not in transition to open access. Latin America has been always open access. Open access has been the natural way in which our scientific communication system works. Journals have been supported by universities and research institutions. The majority of them, about 80% of the total number, including the most prestigious journals, are published by public universities and mean government funded. The tradition of scholarly publishing has not uh, been outsourced to commercial, to the commercial publishers, nor supported by charging authors ever. Historically, we have suffered from not having access to science published in the global north, and recently we are suffering uh, the publication in journals of the north uh, due to the APC model. Well, this cooperative ecosystem involves cooperation, networking, crowdsourcing, open source software, in-house software, free software, international collaboration. It is a non-profit, mainly public funded, funded scientific communication system whose basement is composed by journals and above them, covering some other services, we found institutional portals and repositories, and on the top, we have a regional initiatives like Reda League, La Referencia, and CL for example. These regional initiatives, including, of course, Latindex, Reda League, Cielo, and Claxo, are empowering world open access with different added value services. On the other hand, we can find uh, different stakeholders in green open access, like La Referencia, the network of national networks, of institutional repositories, 
And there are also mandates, institutional and national mandates, that is the case of Peru, Argentina, and Mexico. However, we've got, of course, weaknesses. Uh, open access policies are recommendations more than mandates. Evaluation rewards publishing in English language in international journals, losing uh, some relevant regional topics that are in the agenda of other countries, for example, Chaga disease, Ebola, that are really important topics that are that, by the way, could save, save lives. Uh, the open access indicators are not yet used for research evaluation. Research policies are, and funding agencies are being influenced by international commercial publishers, particularly the APC business model. There's no regional open access formal coalition among uh, stakeholders. So these are uh, some of the weaknesses we have in Latin America. Now, let's take a look quickly at Redalix model and how it's contributing to scientific journals directly and more broadly to open access in the region. Redalix, uh, we can see Redalix as a solution of non-commercial, cooperative and sustainable open access. And let's see uh, this system as a layer infrastructure, where in each layer a journal can find different services and products that complement its own capabilities. This structure is based on peer-reviewed journals, along with uh, the publisher institutions and their platforms, mainly built on software like open journal systems, of course. In Redalic, we perform a selection process based on quality criteria to guarantee our journal collection follows a peer review process and other requirements. Then this evaluation passes one internal ratification and one more made by the advisor board, which is composed by experts of different ways. Now let's move on to the edition layer. Redalic developed an XML markup system called, called Markalic based on the, article, the journal article tag suite, which allows journal editors to get its articles in XML file format. Free access to this tool is provided for open access, non-APC, and this is a very important requirement. A journal uh, it must, mustn't charge authors to get an account in this software, and of course, uh, the journal must be indexed by Redalic in order to uh, access to Markalic. This is a tool free to use, designed to prevent editors from outsourcing XML markup to commercial companies. It doesn't require technical expertise. It minimizes XML markup time. It generates, uh, along with the XML file format, enriched formats uh, and allow content reuse and digital presentation. Well, Markalik, together with the XML file format, generates a media-enriched article reader, a, a PDF, a, an EPUB, and HTML formats. All these are available in Redalik to access to the content, and there's also the possibility, the possibility for journal editors to download uh, these file uh, formats and take them to their own websites. Uh, Redalic provides not only journal, journals home pages, but also home pages for countries, authors, institutions, and areas of knowledge, with their journals collection, with search engines, with advanced filters, with different data visualizations, and with metrics. This is what uh, we call the service layer. Uh, now talking about visibility, in fact, Redalic began 13 years ago with the goal to improve the visibility of the scientific journals of the region, mainly the journals of the social sciences and humanities in that time. Now we uh, have been working with search engines, with libraries, with directories and social media to disseminate more broadly the scientific content and to improve its Discoverability. Uh, 
as well with repositories and aggregators through interoperability protocols like the protocol for metadata harvesting of the open access initiative or with initiatives like ORCID in the case of our author web pages that allows researchers to integrate their works published in Redalic to an ORCID uh, profile. Uh, finally, we provide an alternative set of metrics who are intended to answer different questions than impact factor. Uh, for example, uh, the institutional strengths, the most influential uh, journals in the knowledge area, uh, who is using the knowledge generated by an institution. Uh, it also uh, shows uh, the analysis of the uh, structure of scholarly communication. It is, uh, they also show collaboration, internationalization, and uh, some other uh, metrics. Uh, today we hold a collection of more than half million full text articles from more than 1,000 journals published by 500 publishers from 22 countries with uh, more than 1 million authors and we are registering about 8 million downloads per month. Uh, to illustrate the contribution, the economical contribution of Redalic to journals, just in the edition phase, uh, we can say that uh, well, Redalic with Markalic contributes, and we must say subsidizes, the generation of electronic version for journals. And if we look at the market prices of what Markalic does for free, and considering that it currently Redalic holds 42,000 journal issues, you can see the calculated contribution when the whole collection will be processed, more than $60 million dollars, uh, could be the contribution of Redalic through Markalic. Now let's look at a couple of successful cases. The first one, is the case of, uh, of journals that generate its XML content uh, with no cost in Markalik, download the PDF, HTML, Intel Intelligent Multimedia Article Reader, and EPUF article versions, and use them in their own websites. We have several examples of journals using files generated by Redalik in its own websites. Another successful case is the conversion of a journal from APC to non-APC. This is a journal of the Entomological Society of Argentina that eliminated uh, its APC policy to apply for a user account in Markali. Talking about APC in Latin America, we must say that uh, about 92% of the total journals indexed by Redalic are non-APC journals. The remaining 8% are journals published by professional associations, I mean non-public funded, or journals that recently started to charge authors. APC represents a complement for its survival only. I mean, these kind of charges are non uh, for profit and they are low charges. But in Latin America, we are in risk of the propagation of the APC model from the north, because uh, we must say that the APC model was invented in the north. So we must uh, make some uh, important reflections. In a government-funded scientific communication system where non-APC publication is a fact and sustainability is driven by public resources, which are the advantages in adopting a model to charge up? Could it be a risk of discouragement of governments and public institutions to keep supporting scientific research and publications? Could it be a risk of discouragement of non-profit open access platforms like Redalic to keep strengthening publications? Could journals become, really could become self-sufficient through APCs in a region 
with no funds in research projects to publish results. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of my presentation. Now I would like to summarize by saying that how could Latin, could Latin America and other developing regions participate in the global scientific conversation when restriction, restrictions just change from reading to publishing? The APC model brings a risk of widening the gap between Latin American research and international publication, as well as a risk of breaking the open nature of scientific communication system in Latin America. From our perspective, there's a great opportunity to learn best practices from each side of the world to achieve set the science as a common good. This is our main goal, to, to, to set science as a common good. So thank you very much uh, for, for listening.